Hello everyone. Today is the last day of Digitone Week here in um, Mansion Tony Tyson. And um, today I thought I would do something of a tutorial. So uh, I figured out how to do something on this uh, brilliant little machine and I thought I'd share it with you. Um, and that's one uh, that, that was a popular, relatively popular video of mine which uh, is the one about dub chords. And I think I made those in Diva. Today, let's make them on an FM synth, like the Digitone. So, uh, dub chords, yeah. So, uh, very quickly then, I'm going to start with uh, just a kick drum to um, have something to play to. So deeper kick that's fine there you go tempo is a little bit low 76 uh, okay let's go 128 okay so let's go for track three dub chords we get an initialized sound here just a sine wave and the first thing I'm going to do is select the right algorithm. And what we need, basically what I do with the sub um, dub chords is I use um, a soul wave to make these. Now, this being an FM synth, it doesn't have a soul wave to start with. Uh, you get a sign and you get harmonics. But they're not they're more like wave folding, it's not a, it's not a saw tooth. Um, but there is the feedback function, and the feedback, feedback function um, adds buzziness, which is pretty much, I think it sounds like a saw wave. So what we need then is the feedback, which is the little square on top of the A, B, or C, to um, go directly to an output. So it will be one operator with feedback on itself, and that's going to oh, wrong, wrong dial there. That's going to provide the the soul wave sound. So how we do that? Well, algorithm eight, I think, is the only one that has that. That has B with feedback going directly to Y. So the mix here, I'm setting it to Y, and now we're only getting operator B. It still sounds like a sine wave, but now if I turn the feedback, this sounds like a soul to me and becomes buzzier and buzzier. And at some point, it starts to deteriorate into, into noise. But about here, that's a good enough uh, salt to wave for me. Um, now, before I continue with uh, the sound design, um, let's make life a little bit easier because this is, um, about dub chords and typically that will be like a minor triad. You see? So for instance, C, C, D sharp, G, F, G. My God, I'm very bad at this. I think it's this G, yeah. So C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, G, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so this is kind of, you know, this, this keyboard is a little bit clumsy feeling and I'm not much of a keyboard player. So what we can do here is we can go into the note menu and chord on. Well, it's off now, so we get a major chord. We get a minor chord. C, D sharp, G. Great. So now... Awesome, makes life a lot easier. So, um, more synthesis. We have our um, sawtooth chord, uh, but it's not sounding like a dub chord yet, right? So we need filtering, of course, low pass filtering. And some resonance. And now the big thing is filter envelope. So if I open up the filter 
envelope, I increase the amount, I should say. And this envelope at the top here is going to control the filter. There we go. Creates a stab sound, a stabby short sound. And we can make this a little bit longer. Something we can play with. This as well. And actually, um, let's go for a little bit uh, darker, grittier sound. Let's lower it an octave. Oh, yeah. Maybe a little bit more. We're getting there, right? I said grittier, let's add some drive. It's subtle. I think it becomes probably less subtle if you uh, open up the filter a bit more. It's also becoming quite loud. Okay. Now, this would of course not be dub chords without dub delay, yes. So, amp page, delay. So I set this up earlier. Um, relatively short delay time, you can of course play with that. Typically, it won't be perfectly synced to the tempo, I guess, especially the, the, the dub delay, uh, when they came up with this stuff, you know, in Jamaica in, I don't know, 60s, 70s, long time ago. They, of course, didn't have tempo synced delays because they had analog equipment. And uh, so it's, it's, it's supposed to drift. And you can also see what I did here is I sent some delay to the reverb. Beautiful, and I, um, of course, also from uh, from the amp page, and I changed the reverb a little bit too from its de default setting. I used a lot of um, a high shelf attenuation here, and also the the high pass filter here, and a, a pretty long decay. Okay, so that's that. Now to add more juice. Give it some chorus. Yeah, and back to the filter. One thing we can also do, of course, is set up an LFO to the frequency. I say, of course, well, I mean, um, it is an obvious use of LFO. It's going very fast now. I found that this multiply BPM, so this is second LFO page, by the way, right? So it's multiply is set to eight, no fading in or out. Um, this one, start phase, nothing. Just free running, that's the last one mode. Just give it a slow, add some extra variation. One final thing we can do here is on the second filter page, the bass width filter, thin it out a little bit. Of course, to taste and also depending on your mix, right? I mean, depending uh, how much bass you want this to contribute. These are, um, just playing around with this, parallel chords. So um, a fun uh, fact that, you know, musically these make no sense. You can't have a scale with just minor chords in them. Um, 
but it's a product of uh, people, I guess, in the 80s sampling chords and transposing them. And of course, if you sample a minor chord and you then transpose it, you know, it doesn't magically change into, into a major chord where it needs um, to fit with the musical skill you're in. So um, the, the fact that people started using this actually changed the way we, we listen to music and sort of made this anomaly in musical theory acceptable, right? Let's have a sip of the coffee here. Nice coffee. Important. Sorry about the, the swallowing noises. Can't let it go cold. Nice. Okay. Colombian coffee. So, we have a kick and we have a chord. Um, so the pattern, let's make it a longer pattern. Okay, so it's already set to 64 and an infinite maximum length. Um, something I have to get into as well. What well, that means exactly, what the consequences are. I, I know that if it's shorter than um, the length here, then it won't play for its entire length. It, it'll keep to whatever the length is here. But what the benefits are of a longer maximum maximum length, I'm not sure. Channel length. I think if I want to have four pages of this chord, I have to change that as well. Let's try it. So keep this in. Uh, keep an eye on that. So let's just make something. Let's have the metronome <clears throat> to give, uh, give me a pre-roll here. Uh, time signature, one bar pre-roll, volume. Yeah, the volume, make it a bit lower here. Okay. Now it's so quiet that I can't hear it, I guess. Yeah, because it coincides with the kick. Okay, whatever, this is fine. Um, yes. How do I get out of here? Okay. Quantized. Yeah. Function clear. Sequence cleared. Oh, I got rid of my rid of my kick drum now. Probably uh, brilliant. Copy pasting clearing is a very useful function. Oh, and I, now I need to clear it again because I didn't program the kick. I programmed the chords. Dear oh dear. Ah, yeah, the kick is a short sequence. That makes sense. Okay. What did I do there? God. <laughs> yeah, we're back on track. Ah, well, that's great. I guess it also got rid of the minor chord. Well, fortunately. And the transposition. But um, the patch is otherwise intact. Fun chord. Let's go, let's go one octave lower. And let's go for uh, this nasty sounding. Oof. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's going terribly wrong in the the third page here and the, um, the first one was okay to, 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 to okay that's straightforward so this needs to be here yeah um, copy paste uh, the last space is also messed up. Um, 
trig. C3, let's make that C sharp. Let's make that regular C. Uh, how did I do that here? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Okay. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Okay. Um, assuming that. Which one did I, did I change? <laughs> Only the last one is the right pitch range. Uh, by the way, let's turn off the metronome here. Okay. So this one I need to, yeah, that's a C sharp three. Uh, copy that, paste, 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 paste. This one, uh, no, don't change that. Turn it down, this one perhaps, and this one. Ah, the note length is also different. So this is the, the, the disadvantage of not being much of a, a keyboard player. 125, the length, I'm looking at the length here. Uh, that's actually not a note. Yeah, so that needs to be longer, 1.3-ish. And of course, it's cool if they have different lengths. That just makes it more musical, more natural sounding. Okay, so this should basically. And now, of course, you can play with this. I think actually the uh, delay is maybe a little bit too much. Maybe too fast. You can of course sync it to the tempo if you want to. filter open the filter like this gives a different effect I'm playing with the envelope uh, amount to sort of top it off, little hi-hats, uh, that's probably also multiple pages, right, yeah, so, yes, first page. for you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so uh, yeah, that was just a little overview of how to make dub chords. Let me save my work. Yes. So 
Um, that's all for today. That's all for this session. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, check out the links in the description for my uh, music that I release on my label, Cortex Recordings. Please like this video if you like it. Consider subscribing if you want to see more. Um, I will see you tomorrow again with a new video. Again, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.